Hey, this is Rich with Rich Mount Photography, Sacramento, California, and today I'm going to do a short review, a uh, comparison between the Nikon 24mm PCE tilt shift lens, which has been out for quite some time, and the new, new 19mm Nikon PCE tilt shift lens F4. So this is the new baby. And I uh, had quite a few people ask me the comparison between the two, so I thought I'd just go over it right now. Um, the 19 millimeter just came out, and it's a quite a quite a lens, I will say. I've loved my 24 millimeters, but for real estate photography, and you can find so many reviews on all of this stuff, so I'm only going to be getting into the real estate end of it. So. It's not even, this review is not even about designer photography or architectural, which we usually use tilt shifts for. But for some time, my 24 millimeter was my only tilt shift. And I found that on real estate shoots for like big rooms and a lot of it, a lot of the houses I was shooting, 24 is fine. It's plenty wide enough. But when I get into bathrooms or I get into smaller rooms, bedrooms, upstairs bedrooms, as I'm sure many of you know, uh, this is 24 is just a little narrow for me now. It's perfect for designer shoots and detail shots But I really felt so many times Especially on the last big designer shoot. I did I said boy. I wish I had three more millimeters I wish I had just a little bit more Then they came out with the 19 millimeter tilt shift and I said I'm gonna give it a try and I did now That's the good news and I really really like it Thumbs up. I think it's a great lens, great addition to the Nikon lineup. And it is certainly has advantages over the 24. But I will say one thing it doesn't have an advantage is this was I bought a, used off a of Craigslist for $1,500. I got a great deal. Very nice lens. Love it. This lens was $3,400. $3,400. So I'm saying it was a big decision. And I really had to think long and hard about it. But after three or four months now, I'm keeping it. I am thumbs up in it because I've really become just uh, become enamored with it because now I can shoot a whole house real estate, doing bathrooms, small bedrooms, everything. And I can leave the tilt shift on it. And since I've got the 19 millimeter, I haven't even used the 24 once. I also have not had a lot of designer shoots since then. So the 19 has been fine. But I will say the 19 is a little wide for designer shots, for, for um, getting the shots you want, like detail shots. If you wanted to just get like a stove, get your camera up high, just show a nice stove, a tight shot. This is a little tight. I mean, this is a little wide. Um, so I would still want to use my 24. So I'm keeping the 24. The 19 is going to be for my day-to-day -day use. And I tell you, really, really like it. So let me put down the 24. Actually, let me tell you a couple of comparisons between the 24, which is the um, 24 3.5 DED, and it's the uh, PCE Nikkor with a nano coating. And this is a, just a great lens, and it's it has been a really good addition to my kit. Now the 19 millimeter is um, really, really a nice addition to my kit. Let me get the Sony out of the way. Don't even know why I had that. Oh, I know I had that up. I was gonna show you how I can put my tilt shift on my Sony with my Metabones adapter, speed booster adapter. But that's another video for another time. I was gonna do it now, but it's just too much to deal with. So I'm gonna put that down, put my, put down carefully, put down my Sony, and go back to these two bad boys. So let's just look at them size-wise. I'm gonna put the end of it right about here. So it's roughly the same length, okay? And it is about the same width, so it's not much different. It uh, looks different, certainly looks different. And one of the main differences is in the new build, it has ax, it can rotate on two axes. It can rotate independently for tilt and shift. Where in the past, I've never done it to this lens, and I don't really lens, and I don't want to get into the technicals on that, rotating it on two axes, axes. But basically, here's the uh, 24. I can rotate it on one axis. So if you wanted it on two axes, 
you would have to send it into Nikon. This now, on the other hand, I can rotate it on two different axes, but I think that if you really want to check that out, you can see another review on, uh, there's probably hundreds of reviews by now, but I can, re I can do this axis right here, and I can do the back, the, the shifting axis, which is, where is that? Here it is. Wait. Got to find the, uh, oh, here it is. It's hard on all tilt shifts. It's hard to find the uh, axis uh, rotation uh, knobs. So here's the other axis. So I can move that part and I can move this part independently. So I'm not going to get into why I would want to do that because I'll be honest with you, I only shift. I have not gotten into tilting. I don't do miniature miniature miniaturization making things look toys making them look small in miniature but i do just do the tilting i'm sorry the shifting i will take my camera from a higher perspective and shift down it adjusts the amount of ceiling and i don't really want to get into what a tilt shift does because hopefully the people that are watching this will already have had the 24 and deciding on the 19. And so far, I've given it a big thumbs up, saying, yes, you should make the move. If you can afford it, make the move. I want to say, though, a couple of uh, little things. One, <coughs> excuse me, the shift knob, I'm sorry, the tilt knob is up here. And on the bottom, it has a, um, a lock right here. And you can unlock this, and then you can, tensioner is right here just like this has a tension on uh, the tilting and the shifting. So this is the older Nikon and you can adjust the tension and then you can tilt it. So let me tilt it for you and to show you. Okay, here we go. Uh, let me make sure it's unlocked and untensioned. Okay, here we go. There we go. Very, very smooth, much smoother than this. Very nice, okay. And when you get to the center, you can feel it click just like this lens. Both tilt and shift on this lens, you can feel a click in the middle. So when you're finished with it, I want to lock it. Actually, I'm going to try something I haven't tried yet. If it is slightly in tilt, you can't lock it. So you know, and I'll tell you in a second why that's important. So I'm locking it now. And I'm just going to tighten up the tensioner right here. This is important because when I first got this, I did a shoot and the twilight portion of the shoot, somehow the tilt got out of whack and I had it tilted just a slight amount and everything on the left side of the frame was out of focus, was soft. I thought it was the lens and then I realized, because I've never touched the tilt, I realized it was out. So make sure you have it locked and you're not going to adjust it if you don't want to tilt. Now the shift is another thing. One thing this does not have, two things it does not have that this has, there is no tensioner for the, the shift knob. But I don't think it's going to be a problem. Let me show you. I'm going to shift down. Okay, I don't think there's a problem because um, it's very, um, it really, you can feel exactly where it's going to go. And it's not quite like this. It will not creep. It will not move. They've really designed this really well. So I'm okay without having a uh, tensioner. And the other thing that I'm a little bit, uh, yeah, I'm okay with. First of all, the shift has no lock on it, no tensioner, no lock. The other thing it doesn't have, like that this has, when you go to the middle on this, like with the tilting, you can feel in the middle, it just kind of goes in the middle. It, it clicks or it, it you'll feel it. It's a tactile feel. This shift does not have that. So you don't really know it without looking at it when you're in the middle, when you're not shifted up or not shifted down. So that's something that you got to get used to, but it's been okay. I really haven't minded it and it certainly uh, doesn't outweigh the pros. Now I'm going to tell you the, the last negative about this lens. So first negative is the price. Second negative is there's no tensioner or no, uh, no ability to feel the shift going into neutral or where it's not shifting up or shifting down and no tensioner to adjust the tension, but that's okay. I think they've designed it that way and I've gotten used to it. So it's the price, it's that. The third thing 
is, let me show you this. I wanted to save this for you. And I don't know how to reveal it because when you see it the first time, it's kind of like, oh my gosh. So watch this. It has a pretty significant uh, lens cap on here. And I'm not a big lens cap guy, but here I'm using this lens cap all the time. Very nice lens cap, by the way. There you go. Very, very in your face, prone to destruction, prone to problems. And it's also prone to not flaring, but if the light is in front of the camera or sun, I haven't really used this outdoors in the daytime that much, but it will not get flare as much so as it will get slightly hazy. So I don't put my lights on a stick in front of the camera. I put them behind. It is a downside, and that's the only real downside I've got about it. But I'll be honest with you, it's not enough for me to uh, not completely be in love with this uh, with this combination and lens. So I'm going to give it two thumbs up, and I'm going to say I'm not going to get rid of my 24, my baby. But I will say that I'm going to use this. This does not take the place of this for detail shots, for designer shots. 24 millimeters is great. I might even like to uh, have 45. So I just want to say that they're both great to have in your arsenal. I do enough real estate and architectural and designer to warrant it. And if you're on the verge of it, I'd say give it a thumbs up. It's really a wonderful piece of glass and uh, it just feels great. And it, uh, it just works really well on a full frame Nikon and uh, together with the D750, really like it. So this is Rich with Rich Bound Photography. Send me some comments or you know questions or comments if you wanna know more about this. And I'd be certainly be happy to make a second tutorial to get you up to speed on what we're doing here and what we're liking. Uh, and I tell anybody that's watching this that wants to know more about a tilt shift, I recommend renting it because this will give you the best uh, option to really feel it and try it out. Now, I've done videos on fake tilt shifts, which work. You tilt the camera down and you fix the verticals, but it's not quite the same. And until you really understand and use a tilt shift, you, it's very difficult to understand and not fair to try and understand it. But it is something that people that uh, are using them, we do realize, and it is a freedom, it is an option to really control your perspective and your framing. So I'm a big proponent of tilt shifts. Uh, they're both manual lenses, so it does not have any automatic focus, but that's okay. You don't really need it. So uh, Rich Baum, Rich Baum Photography, telling you to uh, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. I'm okay with either. Uh, write comments, and uh, I just found out today, I'm a little slow, I just found out today, uh, you can ask questions, and uh, I'm going to... Uh, to reply to all those questions that are months and months old. But all my comments are up to date. So watch more of my videos, please. Uh, to help support these free videos, um, subscribe to the uh, Adorama link or use the Adorama link when you go buy new gear. Adorama's a great store if you buy Flashpoint or buy anything. If you wanna use that link, it sure makes me happy and I appreciate it very much. Other thing too is I do private one-on-one -on -one coaching through Skype or uh, if you're local, we might be able to get together. Um, but that really helps a lot. And the last thing is we're doing three-day workshops uh, for luxury home photography. And it's the three-day workshop, intensive workshop. And uh, this next one in September is sold out, October sold out. And, uh, and we're going to maybe do one in February in Las Vegas, but that still has to be decided. So don't count on it. But we're going to have workshops in 2018. The 2017 workshops are full. Me and Mark Weisberg, who is a Sony artisan and a luxury home photographer, top photographer in the business. He's doing it with me and we're just gonna have super luxury stuff and we're gonna show people how to get by day-to-day -day real estate and everything's gonna work out. And we're gonna have a lot of fun anyway. You can see the video. If you look at my videos, I have a whole description of the workshop and an interview and we, we have a little movie so you can check that out. Rich Bound Photography saying, shoot smarter, shoot better, aspire to shoot better, bigger things, make more money and spend more time with your family and hanging out and having a good time. Talk to you later. Rich Bound Photography saying bye.